Hi, and welcome to Summit Pass Studios. My name is Jeremiah Hamilton. I am going to be the host of our MCU Watch Order post look. So like and subscribe this video if you like our content and want to see more. And also leave a comment if you have your own opinions about how the Watch Order should be for the Marvel Cinematic Universe. I'm going to go ahead and start off right away and say that the first movie that we need to bring up in the MCU Watch Order is The Incredible Hulk. Now, I know what you guys are going to say. There's other movies in front of it. All these things don't really matter in a watch order. The main thing is, is that the movies need to transition correctly from point A to point B. As long as we do that, this is going to be a fun watch order to go through. Now, I myself have actually done this watch order twice now and thought that it was a perfect watch order. I know you, some of you, like I said, will disagree, but... Anyways, we need to get on to the watch order itself. So, Incredible Hulk. For, you know, abrupt switches in certain characters, I say we try to space them out as much as we can so that we don't cause our brains to hurt just yet. There's so much more to come that will cause that craziness. Plus, this movie isn't really necessary to the timeline, so you can even skip this one if you wanted. But, I say because of the post credit scene where Tony Stark shows up, that it's a perfect stepping off point. And there's also rumors and theories that maybe at the end of The Incredible Hulk is when Captain America is actually found under the ice. Well, anyways, it kind of starts off the Avengers saga on kind of a rough foot, but at the same time, it transitions nicely into our first movie and where we really start the Marvel Cinematic watch list at Iron Man. The beginning and jumping off point of the MCU, plus it's a great watch. Tony's post credit scene is what lines up the watch order towards Avengers by introducing Nick Fury and the Avengers Initiative. Plus, it's Iron Man. Next up in the list would be Captain America, the first Avenger. I know that it comes first in the timeline, but this is a watch order, and it fits while setting up the Avengers a step further with Cap and the Tesseract. And then from there, the post credit scene actually points towards Avengers, but I feel for the watch order that we need to go back to Iron Man and go to Iron Man 2, especially since they reference Cap's shield in there, and they start setting up the fourth movie in our list, Thor. Not only does Iron Man 2 reference this, but it introduces us to the Avengers' big bad, Loki. Whoa, 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 not yet. I'm already splitting the timeline enough. Anyway, Loki falls, and we move on to... Oh, wait, I also forgot. Yeah, Hawkeye's in here as well. So that, that completes the Avengers and sets us up for Avengers, or Avengers Assemble in the UK. This movie is the culmination of Phase 1 in the MCU, but still just the beginning of a nexus point that will change everything we knew about superhero movies. There are multiple branches from this point, and that's why I use the word... Nexus. One branch reality at this point is the Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. branch. I'm almost saying that it because it weaves in and out of our sacred timeline. And it starts with Phil Coulson's death or lack thereof. It's a fun show with some ties to the overall MCU. And it's just a fun watch overall. You don't have to watch this because it doesn't really tie in. But at the same time, why not? The Defenders branch. Iron Fist, Jessica Jones, Daredevil, Punisher, and Luke Cage all reference the Battle of New York. I understood that reference. <clears throat> Avengers. But it's not considered a part of the overall MCU so far. Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. and these aren't necessary, but just fun to watch. And again, we're moving along. Iron Man 3. Tony's PTSD after the Battle of New York and the Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. universe both point to this happening right after Avengers. So I'm running with it, okay? Plus, there's no post credit scene to kind of direct where it goes next, so it just kind of walks itself into Thor, the Dark World. In the timeline, Iron Man 3, Dark World, and the Winter Soldier all can be interchangeable. But again, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. and how the post credit scene works, this is kind of the best way of going with it since you see the Collector at the end of the movie. Guardians of the Galaxy. It's time to meet the space side of the MCU, plus the music helps the grounding of this 
Thanos family soap opera. And back to Earth. Captain America the Winter Soldier. Flushing out Hydra and bringing in Sam as Falcon, plus the post credit scene takes us directly over to Age of Ultron. They start by mopping up Hydra, and then introduces us to some new characters. You get Vision, Wanda, and for a second, Pietro. Plus, you didn't see that coming. This is a good point for this movie since Thanos shows up at the end as well. Ant-Man. This is where the watch list is a home run after home run. This is also the last step to Civil War. The third Captain America movie, but basically it's Avengers 3. It introduces so many new characters that have major significance going forward. Black Panther, Zemo, and Spider-Man which leads us to the next movie, Spider-Man Homecoming. Iron Man Tony Stark takes Peter under his wing and is a great break from all the Super Friends drama. Plus, it's a great stepping off point into Black Panther, a great universe building point in the MCU, and it brought us the next level of character and it shows us how important Wakanda will be going forward. In Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. This is the only spot that would do justice. It sets up Thanos' kids before Infinity War and closed the door on Quill's past, while introducing us to Mantis, the final member of the group. Doctor Strange. We're in the end game now. This movie gave us so much to unpack, but it transitions perfectly into Thor Ragnarok. The redemption of Loki, the end of Asgard, plus it leaves them in a perfect spot for Infinity War. Just like the first Avengers, this is the completion of a storyline long awaited. Thanos is finally here and he wiped out half of all life in the process of completing his gauntlet. We leave the Avengers in disarray and go into Ant-Man and the Wasp. It's chronologically at the same time as Infinity War, but since I have based most of this list off of end credits, why stop now? Which leads us to Captain Marvel. I know, it happens in the 90s, but what did I just say? Post credit scene. Avengers Endgame. Whew, we did it. Wait, there's 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 more now? With the new content on Disney Plus? Ah, well, we can continue the story, but if you haven't watched Loki, WandaVision, Black Widow, Falcon and the Winter Soldier, then maybe not watch from this point on out because there's probably gonna be a little bit of spoilers. Loki, he's back but not the dead one, the one who disappeared in Endgame. The show is happening all over the timeline, but rumor has it and Disney Plus's timeline say that WandaVision comes next, but might be going on at the same time. Which leads me to Falcon and the Winter Soldier. It sets up so much for Earth going forward and ties into Black Widow. Most people would say between Civil War and Infinity War, but what have I been saying? Post credits. Spider Man Far From Home. It's at the end because, according to Marvel, it happens after Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Plus, it's a great cliffhanger for now. So, like and subscribe and comment your list below and start the debate. Did you like it? Say so. If you didn't like it, say so. Have a marvelous day. And this is a movie timeline.